Hey creative friends, welcome to my channel and I have answers because you have questions. So this video is going to be answering a number of the questions that I got in the comments section of my three January videos from this year. And I um, was super excited. I just wrote them down. As I noticed people were asking the same things, I wrote them down. So I'm going to go through my list of questions and just address them for you. So first of all, I want to say thank you to everybody that watched the videos in January. That's a lot of fun. Thank you for everybody that subscribed and all that stuff because that's a lot of fun. But I love being able to answer questions and help people get on the right track uh, when canning because you know my focus is canning safely with approved methods. And so I kind of get a little frustrated when I see people saying things like, oh, you don't really need to soak your beans. You can just go ahead and pour them in dry and fill them with water and can them because it cuts it cuts out the amount of time. But you know what? I have always said if you don't have time to can correctly, then don't can then. Wait until you have time to do it because I'm a safety girl, so I'm always going to promote that. So, um, So anyway, I'm glad I'm able to answer some of these questions because they're good ones. Okay, so some of the questions were, first of all, um, I used my, well, some of these questions actually will kind of run into each other. I'm going to move you right there. Anyway, they'll kind of run into each other because they kind of overlap. But I used my Ball Fresh Tech boiling water canner when I did my videos. And one of you even said, oh, that was pretty slick. I could see how you canned all three of them and everything at the same time. And you're right. I had everything set up for each video. <laughs> and I did one. And like, well, one thing, the ketchup or the, the tomato herb was on the stove cooking down. I was filming the apple chili and then while that was doing its thing I was filming the mango habanero so I was actually doing them all three consecutively and then I showed them all in the boiling water canner now yes all of those things could be done in a steam canner I did not because I needed the space on the top of my stove in order to do those batches those three different kinds and when I showed so one of one of the here's the question so one of like items in the same pot when I showed you all the items in my canner together that was the three things from January those were the three items I made now when I say like items people were like what do you mean well I did not say in my videos and I'm sorry that I should have all of those processed for 10 minutes they all processed for the same amount of time so those things can all go together time wise perfect Flavor wise, here's the reason why you want to have like items together. Let's say you're going to do an apple sauce and a pear butter, or maybe peaches and pears. If you have those things together and one of them happens to siphon, you know the lids are going like this with the air coming out. Sometimes when they come down, they might suck a little liquid back in and it kind of goes back and forth. If you have the same types of things, all sweet, they're gonna, it's gonna be fine. You're not gonna taste that different. But let's say you had that tomato herb jam that I was making and you put it in with pear butter or peaches, like maybe some, I don't know, peaches or something. If that tomato stuff kind of siphoned a little bit, and if you are if you can for any amount of time, you'll know when you take your things, when you open your canner, whether it's a pressure canner or a boiling water canner, and you look and the water is not clear, something siphoned. So if something was to siphon, let's say that tomato herb jam siphoned, and you had peaches in there, that tomato flavor is so very different from the peaches that it would actually override like if you tasted the peaches you'd be like that that tastes a little funky because it will skew that flavoring so if you were to have things like what i had everything was savory or if you were to have like a ketchup and a, a pasta sauce if everything processes at the same time you have them all together tomato items you're not going to really notice a flavor um, savory things there's not going to be much of a change but if you have a savory thing with a super sweet thing and they mix particularly if the savory thing gets into the sweet thing it's going to ruin the flavor so that's what i mean when i say like items together not just the processing time 
but the item's flavor base as well. So that, I hope, answered some questions. And then, if I was just doing a small batch, like if I wasn't doing all three of those, in fact, I considered doing each video individually and using a small pot, because if I only have like four or five little half pint jars, they don't need to go in that great big thing. They don't even need to go in a great big can or a steamer. They don't even need to take up that much room. You can put them, like I have, you probably have seen the blue pot that I use. It's like a stock pot. Maybe it's an eight quart stock pot. You can, as long as you have... Uh, something covering the bottom and I've shown how to use the rings and put those down to hold the jars up off the bottom or you can actually get a mini uh, canning rack and you can put those in there just so the jars are up off the bottom that makes me think about using a towel let me tell you about that in a second but you want to keep the jars off the bottom of the pot because that keeps the the liquid circulating and keeps the heat moving um, but as long as the pot is deep enough that you can get one or two inches above of water above the jar. So let's say this, uh, this is my bobbins for my sewing machine. As long as you can get water up there, then, you know, deep enough, you can use a smaller pot. But I just used the big pot because I had all those things. Now, that reminded me, it's not even on my questions. Somebody had said something about using a towel in, uh, in their pot. And it used to be people used towels. They would put them down in the pot and put their jars on them. And they thought that helped from them you know, banging around or something like that. But it actually hinders the process because it is solid, it is thick, it absorbs the liquid, the jars sit on top of it, but no heat actually moves around the jars. It hits the towel and the towel's just there. It kind of moves around here, but it doesn't fully get around the jar. So if you've seen people or people have said, oh, just put a towel in the bottom of your pot, don't do that. that that's not, um, it's not really the best way to do it because you're going to hinder the heat transfer around the pot. That's a side note. That's not even on my questions. Okay, so why not double the recipe? Okay, if you're going to do something with pectin, you don't want to double the recipe. Side note, if you have something that doesn't set up, it's not ruined. It just has become a different item. So if you have something that doesn't set up, it could be a syrup, you could add it to yogurt, you could make a cake and put it on the cake. You could do, uh, if it's like something like peaches or mangoes or something, you can use that as a glaze when you're cooking, uh, maybe a chicken, chicken breast or something. So a jam or jelly that doesn't set up may not be a jam or jelly. It has now become a sauce or a glaze or whatever. Just kind of think about what else that flavor would go well with, and then you can use it. So good. But why not double a recipe with pectin? Okay, pectin when they say to use a specific amount of pectin for a recipe is because that recipe, the amount of the recipe, is calculated for a specific amount of pectin. Because if you ever notice like recipes will say boil hard for a minute and things, because the pectin needs that heat for that length of time in order to gel or in order to do its thing, basically. When you double it, even though you have twice as much pectin, the length of time that that twice as much pectin has to sit in the heat, because if you have twice as much stuff, it's going to take twice as long to get to that stage that where you need it or where the pectin needs it. So it's going to be exposed to the heat for way, way longer, and it will break down. So that's why you don't want to double anything with pectin, because basically the pectin kind of gets overheated and dies before it's supposed to. So if you have the smaller amount, it doesn't take as long to get hot, the pectin is just fine, boom, and then it goes in a jar. Whereas this, when you got your pectin, it needs to get this much heat for this length of time, but it's getting that much heat for that length of time, and it kind of kills your pectin. So that's why. So when I said don't double anything with pectin, that's why. Now if you're doing something that doesn't have pectin, you're cool. I've doubled things. It's fine. Um, so then when will you see, oh, when will we see these things being used? So people love to see canuary, but they also love to see things made with it. And I'm going to get a little bug in your ear. Wait until March. Wait until March because there's going to be a thing where we're going to use recipes. It's all about using these in food. So you'll see them. Just keep hanging on. Watch, watch for upcoming collaborations. That's just a little teaser for you. Now, vinegars. Uh, okay, so 
I talked about lemon juice is actually more acidic than vinegar and you can substitute, you can replace vinegar with lemon juice, but you cannot replace lemon juice with vinegar because vinegar is at 5%. The, the vinegar you need for canning is 5%. Look at your vinegars in the store though because I've got some red wine vinegar that was 4%. So you want to make sure it should be on the label. It should always say 5%. But if you want to mix it up a little bit, like say I had that tomato herb jam and I don't like the flavor of balsamic. I could have used cider vinegar. I just need to make sure on the label that it is 5%. So sometimes when you're using, when you're maybe pickling and it's got a lot of vinegar in it and you want to kind of change it up and try some other things, that's okay as long as the vinegar is 5%, even balsamic vinegar. I looked uh, in, my, in my cupboard and I've got some malt vinegar, it was 5%. I have some red wine vinegar, it was 5%. I do have the big bottle of 4% though, and I wrote all over it, do not use for canning. Um, so, and a lot of times those ones with lower uh, acid levels percentage are made for like things like salad dressing, so they don't have such a vinegary flavor. But just keep an eye out. But yeah, you can you can use different vinegars as long as they're 5%. And so you could come up with your own like flavor um, by maybe putting balsamic instead of cider or something like that. That's kind of cool. And now, on the, mango on the mango habanero, a lot of people were concerned that it would be too hot. When you taste it, it's kind of a sharp mango, kind of a hot mango, but it does have an, a heated afterburn. <laughs> it does. So if you don't want it so hot, you can in in canning when you're using something with peppers. You peppers are peppers. You can use any type of pepper for any other pepper. Um, just never increase the amount. Always use exactly the same amount. So instead of habaneros, if you are a jalapeno person or a banana pepper person, you can use that amount of pep that pepper in place, but just keep the exact same amount. And then you can change the flavor of it so that it's not as hot, or, um, or if it's something you want hotter, you could put habaneros in there instead of jalapenos or banana peppers. So you can do that. Look, I'm the first, first half of my questions. Okay, small batch canner, uh, it's okay. A lot of people, old canners, okay, I had so many people say, oh my gosh, I used to can years ago, and then I decided I wasn't going to can, so I gave all my stuff away. Honestly, if I gave all my stuff away, I would be setting up probably two households <laughs> with canning forever, because I've been canning a long time. I've been doing this. I've been given things. I've collected things. I got tons of stuff, but now in my life, it's just the two of us. I am not doing the big canning like I used to do, like I once did. I used to make a bunch of things. I would get a harvest or people would give me cases of apples and I would do all kinds of stuff. And that stuff, now I find we don't eat it quick enough. So I'm doing, I'm kind of pulling back and I am actually canning things like soups in pint jars instead of quart or quart. And sometimes I'll do things. I used to do all our meats in pint and a half jars. Now I just do them in pint jars because I'm usually making meals for two. So it's okay to kind of cut back and can fewer or fewer items. Um, and that's cool because you still have control and it's still a creative thing. Well, it's not, it's scientific, but I'm just saying it's a thing that you make that you feel good about, that you enjoy doing. So if you are a canner who's not canning anymore because you don't have that big family or group that's living in the house that you need to feed or you're not gardening like you once were, so you have all kinds of harvest, it's okay. Those recipes that I did for January were actually just really small amounts of things that you get at the store. So it's cool to continue to can and still have those things because it may not be that you're filling your pantry for, you know, whatever, like to be able to live on. Sometimes small batch canning is just canning things that enhance the cooking that you do. So a lot, I find a lot of stuff, yep, yeah, my pantry's full. You guys have seen videos of my pantry. But now most of the things I'm canning are like what I did for, can, for uh, January. They're just things that I can use in different things to enhance and make my meals better. Um, so small batch canning, I'm all for it. Um, then, oh, I ha we use the four jars lids, awesome four jars. Does, they have such good lids, like so good. And, we, you know, 
they're awesome for um, for the canuary. They they had a prize. It was they're just great. Um, but anyway, as far as lids go, in the olden days, lids actually had a really thick rubber uh, red ring in there and you had to get that hot so it'd be soft and it would be able to stick you know push down on the jar you know because you'd like a rubber band you know you get it soft and it could stick down better but now canning lids just have a really thin like a little silicone so i think it's silicone i'm not sure what it is but anyway it just has a really thin little little it's like a gasket that's attached it doesn't need to be hot. I just like to wash my my ring or my lids. I like to wash them and rinse them and I put them in a bowl with warm water. I just do that. It's just a habit. It's not required. Read the box. The box will tell you how, ne how you need to handle your lids. Um, I just like to because I like to also take my paper towel and tap in the water and use that to wipe the rims of the jars. So is it required? Probably not if you look at your lids. Is it something I just like to do? Yeah, because then I feel like once I've washed them and I put them in that bowl I know that they're clean. It's just it's kind of a thing here, but it's not required The lids will still work even if I didn't do that Okay altered recipes. I had so many people say hey Can I make that with monk fruit or can I make that with stevia or whatever? You know what? Here's the deal. I don't ever alter an established, approved research recipe. I just don't. Unless it says you can alter it by doing these things, or unless I'm altering it by substituting like things like peppers. But to actually change a product out, like a sugar for a stevia or a monk fruit or honey, I don't do that. Because the recipe has not been tested for that. And a lot of those uh, uh, alternative sweeteners do not perform the same and they don't serve the same purpose in the canning. But the recipes that I used, and most of the time, when you're boil water canning or whatever, by the time you even put it in the jar to process, it's already cooked. Like the mango habanero jam, it didn't cook in the 10 minutes in the boiling water. It cooked in the pot before I put it in the jars. So if you wanna make it your way and then freeze it you're probably fine because i don't know how the long-term storage in the jar is going to affect any of those different sweeteners but if you want to make it some people have even make it without any sugar at all and then when they open it they'll add the sugar or the type of sugar that they want to their flavor but anytime you want to alter something particularly if it's something like i was doing there just freeze it like the freezer doesn't require that it be vacuum sealed or anything. It doesn't. The freezer just requires that it's got enough headspace to expand. So they'll say to leave like an inch and a half, two inches headspace because the product in there expands more in freezing. Uh, so make what you want and freeze it. That's a good thing. But don't like change it. Here I'm on a ramp. I'm on a little vent here. Don't change a recipe put it in a jar and see that it seals and then go tell everybody that this is the way to do it because it may not be. Um, you know, people say my kitchen, my rules, but sometimes when you are showing stuff, I feel like it's my kitchen, my rules. Sure. When I don't have this camera on, when I have this camera on, I'm bringing my kitchen into yours. So it is not just my kitchen, my rules. It is also could be your kitchen. So that's why I'm pretty careful about that. But anyway, that's just me. Sorry. The rant. Okay, try to add tips in. Oh, the, when I did the tip about putting the empty jar in the canner, when you've got, people were like, I never thought of that. You know what? You could put a lid on it and can water if you want to can water or if you just want a spacer. Just put a jar in there and make sure that the jars are all standing up and it'll hold them. It's better. And then I've actually had so much room in my Ball Fresh Tech canner that I took <laughs> I took my... It was the four cup Pyrex, you know, measuring cup. And I set it down in there because it held everything around it. So it doesn't matter what goes in there. It doesn't have to be a canning jar. Something, it can just be something that's glass that's going to hold it and that can be boiled. So that's cool. Um, and I did talk about the steam can. Every All the recipes that I did for January, you can steam can them. That's fine. Um, uh, I just didn't because I did all three of them together. So that's the questions that I have written down. If I find more, if I think of any more or some of them come up, 
I'll try to do another follow-up video after this. But I hope these things help you. I hope they help you uh, kind of focus on canning. And I am the kind of person, and several people said when I explained a couple of things about canning, I'm a why girl. Why does that happen? Why can't I do that? Um, why is that a rule? If you explain it to me so that I understand and I feel like this is true uh, across the board, if you explain something and why, the why of it, then that knowledge can spread over other things and give you some critical thinking when it comes down to like, like a friend of mine was worried because she noticed when she was canning tuna in the four ounce jars and she put them in the pressure canner that the bot she was layering them and the bottom layer was underwater and she was like oh my god hey boiling water can and things are underwater it's okay and she was like oh i never thought of that so now now just when you get an o oh or an aha moment it kind of helps you go forward so anyway that's just me that's the questions that i had from my three canuary videos and i hope they help and as always thanks for watching and i'll see you in my next video